Welcome back to the Wrong Advice Podcast. I'm your host, John Pacciuto, and I'm incredibly excited to have my good friend, Taylor Ballantyne, on the line with us again. Taylor, how are you? I am great. How are you? Oh, so <laughs> fucking good. I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. Dude, I'm <sighs> so excited to be back. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. So, so fun. Rumor has it, you've got some big life experiences coming up in the next 48 hours, and I'm just wondering, like... How's life been the last seven or eight months since we last got on the pod and chatted? Since we... <laughs> yeah, um, rumor rumor has it correct. Uh, the last seven or eight months, honestly, have been a challenge. It's just been getting adjusted into a new city, finding balance between um, all the things that I want to work on personally, trying to expand my business, looking at areas of my business where I'm like, yeah, I've grown out of this play. I, I've grown out of this piece. I want to expand it in this direction. Um, and it's, it's intimidating. Like it's, it's a really big commitment for me personally to go, okay, that thing, that thing that we've been doing for over a decade, we're now going to expand it and move into this direction. So we can't do that thing anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, <laughs> and it's, and, and it's, it's really challenging because it just, you know, it, it just means actually having to vocalize to people, Hey, this is the direction that I want. And they might not view me that way. And I might not get work with those people anymore. Or I might, I don't know, you know, it's, or they might, it's, I'm it's super such it's such a challenge. <laughs> I'm super curious if there's like a natural progression for photographers to inevitably end up as a cat out of the bag feature film director. So I'm super curious if, you know, because like if, oddly enough, <laughs> at the end of this month, I'm going to be directing my first music video, which in a million years I never would have thought I was doing. Yes. But you're going to be directing yes! a fucking movie. So do you think there is I'm some sort of a natural progression yeah. in terms of like a creative's career that like inevitably people end up in these places? I can't speak for everybody, but I can say for myself that photography was never going to be enough for me. Mm. And I think I knew that going into it. And I knew it because as I advanced within photography and grew within photography and my interest kept switching um especially like <clears throat> the genres of my interest when it went from okay let's make this about fashion fashion is the only thing i care about okay now it's music okay now it's everybody now it's every type of person now it's documentary now it's sports now it's stories within it just kept growing and expanding and I got to a point where I'm like, I don't, you know, eight pages in a spread is not enough time to tell the story I want to tell. Mm. And so I think it kind of found me, but I think the process of starting the way that I did and growing into this, that natural progression, I think has taught me so much about myself, my business, my creative, my voice, um, how to build a business how to expand it now up until up into this direction. Cause you know, I mean, it's my dad always said, you know, as, as you get older, the stakes get higher. And I'm <laughs> like, what does that mean? And now I'm like, Oh yeah. Oh no shit. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it's, it's, I feel like, yeah, I mean, this was just a natural progression for me. I think some people like I never got to expand my photography career in certain areas that, I really thought it would go as far as fashion photography and, you know, shooting spreads for Vogue and having every cover, you know, I never mm -hmm. did that. I yeah. did, I did something else. I, you know, I mean, I did my covers and stuff for SI and I did, you know, I did documentary and I did a lot of advertising and commercial work, but I didn't. Um, and I directed commercials and did really cool pieces and stuff like that, but it was never, it always kind of started moving into into in into into video and, and storytelling and narrative it just kind of happened that way yeah I, I think that's so fucking cool and one of the sort of uh joys that i've uncovered is like it's funny i want to say 
four or five months ago, I was on a podcast and I was telling the, I had a photographer on and I was like, yeah, I have absolutely zero interest in video. I was like, I'm never going to do a video. I'm never going to be a director. I'm never going to do Like, I hate it. Like I just, the, the process of editing a video, I was like, I don't want to fucking have anything to do with it. And then someone was like, Hey, do you want to direct a music video? And I was like, shit. It is a pain I'm not in the gonna ass. Say, I'm, not gonna I'm not going to say no, right? Like, I'm not going to say no to work. And then now you it's... You can't say no to that. I know. Now it seems like an inevitable... But here's the thing, though. If you, But if you try it, right, and maybe it doesn't feel the way you think it's going to feel, you don't know. It's like if you have the experience, you might fall in love with it or you might be like, you know what? This isn't for me. And it'll, you know, it's... You're, your career will expand in whatever direction it's supposed to. And, you know, and, but it's all based on what you care about and what your interests are. I mean, bottom line is if you don't like doing it, don't do it. <laughs> it's going to, don't do it. I mean, because whatever you do and something you don't like, it's going to suck. Oh, <laughs> I totally. mean, you know? Yeah. Welcome. So. We could talk about that. The context of that in my love life for hours. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm super curious how <laughs> it's a solid personal analogy. <laughs> yeah. I'm super curious how you know you're you're within a, a couple days of leaving your house to go on location and start this feature, and I'm sort of wondering like what's going on inside uh. of you as like are you have feelings of imposter syndrome? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Are you like what what is like bubbling in the surface right now for you? Panic, sheer panic. No, uh, <laughs> literally every <laughs> everything you just said is exactly what's happening to me. Excitement, um, imposter syndrome. Um, you know, I've got this. To what am I doing, you idiot? Um, to all the <laughs> all the range of emotion. <laughs> but no, actually, it it's. Um, but all in all, I'm I'm kind of. I've been in pre-production for the last two to three months. Okay, so gotcha. there's been a ton of planning. There's been a lot of anticipation getting to this moment. And this is a really good shoe in for like for me, for this to be my first feature, I am so lucky on multiple accounts. One, it's a concert film that is expanding into a bunch of other things that we get to do. Like I, it's not just this one piece. There's so many other things that will come out of this mm -hmm. um, that I'm so excited to share with everybody. Um, there's a lot of a lot of jam packed extra pieces that we're doing. So it's a really it's a really special project in that regard. It's also with one of my dearest friends that I've known for over a decade, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, and he is an unbelievable, incredible blues musician, prodigy blues guitarist since he was 16 years old is when he basically started his career. And we're celebrating um, his second album, uh, Trouble Is, which is the 20, it's the 25th anniversary of of this second album. And arguably one of, I mean, the most iconic blues records out there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, and we're actually, we're filming it in the place that they actually had the original record release party Ooh. at the Strand Theater in Shreveport, Louisiana, oh. which is his hometown. Oh. So it is going to be like, the energy is going to be next level because yeah. I mean, this the hometown is unbelievably elated that this guy is coming and doing this. And it's a benefit concert. We're supporting incredible, um, <clears throat> incredible organizations. Um, we're supporting the uh, North Louisiana, Northwest Louisiana Justice Center um, and the Providence House, uh, which is a, a homeless shelter for families. Oh, that's awesome. um, and so, yeah, it's it's really it's going to be. It's going to be an incredible night, and it's they sold out that show in literally three days. I mean, less than we put the tickets up and gone. So, and it's a pretty big. I mean, it's a pretty decent yeah, theater. No, it's, it's like big fifteen hundred people. Yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty big. So um, yeah, it's famous sold out right as fuck. Away. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And and um, yeah, and we're we're also doing a, a lot. So the show is coming up this weekend, and then we're we're also filming for a live stream which will air february 20th so everybody can watch the concert on february 20th if you can't if you haven't you know if you can't do it in person um but it's 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 exciting it's a lot of pieces in the air um it's kind of a culmination for me of taking everything that i've learned in commercial and advertising and editorial and print and documentary and short narrative and just multiplying it by 10 mm -hmm. and going okay it's We've dealt with this, but now we're just dealing with more people, more <laughs> personalities. And so it's really been a real 
challenge and practice for me of patience and going, you know what, this is your first time doing this in this realm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have to, you know, like there are times where I'll get out out of like production meetings and I'm like, Oh, why did I say that? Or man, I should have said that. Or, Oh man, I got, I got to figure out a way to do this or that better. And I'm like, you know what? Just relax. Yeah. This is your, you, you, this is a whole new world you're exploring. Be as patient with you, you know, with yourself as you can. And this is trial by fire. And I have been really lucky in my career to have my lessons that I need to learn that are trial by fire lessons in, you know, it, it, in a, in an area that is uh, pretty successful. I mean, or they're yeah. successful. So it's like, I get to kind of try this out on somebody that's already successful. <laughs> yeah, so right. Well, plus you, you've done enough. For me. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say also, you've done enough in your career where you feel confident in yourself to be able to deliver these things. Right. I would imagine there's obviously the trepidation of yes. when they, someone asks you to do something you've never done before. And you're like, well, fuck, never thought about that, but fuck yeah, I'll do it. Like, yeah. you know, I, I feel like as yeah. at least in, in my own skin as a creative, like when someone asks me to do something I've never done before, my first thing is like, can I do this? And then it's like one side of my brain is saying, absolutely not. You can't do this. And then the other side is like, yeah, sure. Go for it. Who the fuck cares? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. No, it's 100% true. And I am like, that is definitely, <laughs> that is definitely where I'm at. Like, I'm, I'm like, you know, is this something I'm like, what, can I really do that? Like, what am I thinking? Like literally this morning I woke up and I'm like, is this happening? How have you been like, sleeping? Who agreed to let me do this? Like, <laughs> how, how <laughs> I you, mean, how, on and off. Uh, it, good. Some nights great and some nights very restless. I'm, I think it's just, it's the buildup. And as I'm getting closer and there's a lot of scheduling, that's also going to be a really big challenge within this. Um, that's the other piece of this whole puzzle is 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 the scheduling we've got um we're a big part of the project is we're going to be speaking to a lot of people that were um you know a part of the making of this incredible record 25 years ago and mm -hmm. have been a part of kenny's life for a very long time and so um you know it's going to be really interesting to you know have all those people in the same room which they all maybe haven't been in the same room in a really long time mm -hmm. so to have all that energy collectively and kind of balance that and schedule everybody out and make sure we get to hear from everybody and it's it's going to be really interesting to see how it all unfolds i'm, su um, I'm super yeah. curious what goes into from a creative perspective like you know, a feature film is a lot, right? So in terms of like gear selection, in terms of like team selections, like you're the CEO of this project in essence. So I'm super curious, like how, when you were presented mm -hmm. with this opportunity, like where your head went from like pragmatically in terms of like what you needed to accomplish before you get there, obviously on Wednesday. Well, first things first, when I was presented this project, it was um, for Kenny's dad, Ken Shepard, Mr. Ken Shepard. We all call him Big Papa. <laughs> um, and he and it's, it's actually a really cool because uh, Kenny and Ken have been paired as a father son um, duo team in this business forever, ever since he started his career. Mm -hmm. So they have managed you know, they, they have managed to keep their relationship intact and have this incredible business partnership, um, which, you know, I've, and I have a similar creative relationship with my parents. So it's, it's, uh, That's awesome. I, I under, I understand it. Yeah. And, and it's, um, and I understand it's, it's challenges and it's, and it's great, great, great helps in a lot of ways. Um, but it's, it's interesting. But anyhow, he's the one that brought me the project and I was talking to him and he was like, okay, this is what we want to do. We've tried to attempt something like this before, but then COVID and everything changed. So he was able to say, okay, you know, here are some people that we can start to call and, you know, put feelers out. But the first thing I did was call my manager and um, speak to a producer so we could actually get a budget together and then start, um, shopping for production companies and for me you know looking for the right production company it really just i mean there are so many great production companies that i've had the honor of working with or i'm on their roster as a director um or that i've just had great experiences with you know on one-off projects but it always just depends on what the project is 
what the budget is, what we're actually going to be able to pull off because doing a doing what we're doing of this size is there's it's a lot and it's mm-hmm. a big theater and shooting in a theater. The first time I I well my first music video was in a theater. Um, and I had, and that was with Kelly Clarkson and Jay Coot. And that was, and we had a cr- crew of, we had a skeleton crew because it was also COVID as well. So we had a skeleton crew of maybe four or five people, mm-hmm. um, on the actual camera crew and maybe one or two others running around. So, um, and, and being in a theater, everything is as far away as you could possibly <laughs> imagine. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is <laughs> about being in a theater and going, yeah, man, we're all going to, we're all going to be in one room. It's not going to be a big deal. No, yeah. like it is a football field. Yeah. I'm like, I, it's crazy. Well, it's, it's, it's meant I'm for like, people to watch and not for people to like <laughs> record. I'm going to tell you what, that was really, really challenging. And I did not expect that at all. So now kind of being back in this theater and shooting in a theater before, I'm like, okay. I mean, obviously we have, we're going to have like five or six cam- We're probably going to have actually closer to seven or eight cameras um, cool. to, to cover this whole thing. But um, so we actually ended up going with an incredible production company called L2 Productions that's based in Austin. And this is what they do. They do concert films. Um, they do a lot of big sporting events. Um, you know, they cover a lot of TV broadcasts for sports music. Um, but they have a really, really unique system that actually saved us a lot on budget, which is a remote option, which kind of made me uncomfortable in the beginning a little bit because I was like, wait a minute. So you're going to be remoting back all this footage. Somebody's going to be back there on a switchboard. How am I going to be able to implement like, you know, how I want to do all of this? So, but technology is pretty incredible and amazing. So, and I'm, I've like have to, I, I even, I mean, I'm, I've found out throughout this process. I think I am a little bit more of an analog gal <laughs> than yeah. I thought I was. Yeah. Um, like I like things simple and I like things like, in, you know, that physically I can touch in and your hand. Yeah, and right. <laughs> physically in my hand. So this is like a little bit of a stretch, um, but it's crazy because they don't have to bring out a bunch of massive trucks and wire a building for two days. And it probably saves the production, you know, 30 to 40 grand. I mean, it's like wow. it is a giant savings to be able to have everything remote. And, you know, we just have that just means we have, you know, a bigger team and and um more walkie talkies <laughs> and more video monitors so that we can all communicate and be able to pull it off. But, um, you know, it, it, it really ends up helping, especially when there's, you know, at a, at a venue like this, if you can keep at an event like this, if you can keep your setup somewhat, um, back, scaled yeah. back, it, it's easier. It's much easier. Yeah. Um, and I've always kind of operated that way. I, I'm like, you know, I mean, it's unavoidable in certain in certain areas. You know, you have to you got to have what you need. But um, I like to, you know, what I what I can do with six lights. If I can do it with three, I'll bring three. You know, mm-hmm. that's kind of always been my mentality within photography, within video, within everything. It's just simple. So let's simplify it so that we can stay no- mobile. Because a lot of my creative style is, you know, I like to have that mobility and that freedom. Mm. Um, you know, so if you have a couple of great, you know, steady shots, then throw somebody on a gimbal and let them run around like crazy. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the stuff, man. So, yeah. um, I'm super, yeah, I'm so super curious. So from like, from a, like a f- actual physical, what you're going to be doing while you're there, are you going to be mm-hmm. sort of like behind the scenes? Are you physically holding a camera? Like, what does that process look like for you as the director of this film? Uh, I'm going to have, we actually, I'm going to have a, a, a phone attached to my head. I'm going to have, um, a, like a walkie talkie essentially. <laughs> There's this amazing app that actually I didn't know about. And I think it's called, wait a minute. It's called unity. Okay. If anybody doesn't know about this, this is magic. So this app is called unity and you can create a bunch of different channels and essentially it's just, it's like all through Wi-Fi, and you can oh, talk to anybody and it's, yeah, especially for big productions and music, concerts, movies, whatever unity. That's, it's really, really cool. Um, but anyway, I'll be attached to that, uh, and talking to everybody. Um, <laughs> but what it looks like for me is I'm just going to be making, I'm going to be, um, working with, we have load in on, so this is usually, this is our schedule. This is how it goes. We've got load in on Thursday and then Friday and Saturday are going to be our big shoot days. We might be shooting some pickup stuff on Thursday. So for me, 
it's going to be working with the film. Uh, we have a couple of different film crews that are split for, for different reasons. Um, and so we'll be, uh, I'll just kind of be, I'll be with them. I'll be attached. I'll be, yeah, I'll be attached to the hip with whatever DP that I'm working with. If it's, uh, the stage crew where we are rehearsing for, um, the actual shots, the sweeping shots that are close to the stage, we're going to be, you know, I'll be there. Then we'll have to be up top We're um, we got a drone. We're going to be flying a (laughs) drone around a lot of places. Um, we're going to be doing pickup shots, B roll. We're going to be talking to a lot of people. So there's a lot of stuff that we are getting, not just this concert film. There's going to be a lot of other stuff that we, uh, that comes along with this. So there's like five or six different things that are going to be going on at once. So I'm going to be jumping around pretty much for each one and, um, overseeing that process. So it'll be, it'll, it'll be jam packed. It'll definitely be a a wild, a wild couple (laughs) of days. In terms of pressure, uh, there's a live performance port, you know, portion that is going to be, sort of like a one shot take, right? You you don't have an opportunity to fuck it up, yeah. right? How how does that make you feel? Correct. <laughs> I kind of love it <laughs> because I don't I mean I have a different my training it has been in journalism and in documentary and in storytelling, you know, from from that from that perspective where you got to show up you got to have the instinct to be in the right place at the right time and execute no matter what. And if you fuck it up, you fuck it up. If (laughs) you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. It's, and you kind of just have to learn how to live with yourself when you don't. Um, And going through that process over a decade of time and just kind of having that muscle exercised within me, it just doesn't, scare me anymore it excites me but i also feel confident that i will have the instinct to guide whether it's me physically holding the camera or somebody else i will be able to guide and instinctually know what comes next Mm -hmm. um and so do they i mean these guys have been doing concerts and they you know they've been doing films like this for for quite some time so you know, we vetted these DPs, we chose them specifically for this reason, because of of their work and what they excel in. So for me, it's really, um, you know, I'm, I'm trusting in their, I'm trusting in them. But look, we're, it's people and they're a band and, you know, they might sing something wrong, (laughs) or they might, you know, miss something or, you know, I mean, these guys are pros, but you know, like yeah. no matter power what type of out. pro you are, <laughs> we're all pros in the room. Yeah, exactly. The power could go out. I, you know, someone could, you know, just have a freak out and start cursing for 45 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> Anything could happen, but you know, you got to lean into it. I yeah. guess is sort of how I see it. So that's, that's I, I kind of welcome those experiences because also too, it's like, you know, let the audience be a part of it. Let them know what's going on. Like, let them, you know, it's all a part of the experience. They know that we're going to be filming. So it, it, it'll, we'll see. I mean, we also have a couple of days of rehearsal. So we're going to have time to plan it out. We're going to have time to practice. We're going to have time to pace everything and get an idea and a feel for what it's going to look like. And then show night's show night. And whatever <laughs> happens, happens. <laughs> I think You got to go with it, man. I think like as your friend watching like what, you know, being able to see sort of like how things have so rapidly sort of taken off for you is just like such a cool thing. And I'm obviously there's a decade plus worth of work that falls into this thing, but I'm sort of curious about your feelings on like the serendipitous nature of life and how, you know, one opportunity begets another opportunity and how, like when you're on this cusp of like a monumental career achievement, you're about to, you know, embark upon how that sort of has you reflecting on both the past and then like what your future could look like beyond this. That was a really good question, right? Oh my God. That was a... (laughs) Dude, that was an amazing question. Holy shit. Honestly, I think we should just end the podcast right there. I don't even think I should answer. My God, my answer is not going to be as good as the question. Um, <laughs> you, I love how you immediately impressed yourself. You like pulled back from the mic and you I were did. like, oh, that was awesome. Way to go, Jay. Way to go. 
Oh, uh, that was really funny. <laughs> um, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I blacked out. Uh, I, I, yeah, so did I, dude. I blacked out. That was I blacked out in excellence. Um, in in light of your excellence, I blacked out. Uh, <sighs> I I actually it's <laughs> beautifully said. However, I I have actually thought about this quite a bit. Um, for me personally, like I. Um, I mean, I, I'm a spiritual person. I have faith. I believe in God. I was raised Catholic. I've, you know, that has formed and changed, um, you know, over, over my adult life. Um, but I have my own personal relationship with that. And, um, for me personally, it's, that is, I've always kind of said, you know, I can't, I, there's a Catholic saying, you know, work like it all depends on you. Pray like it all depends on God or uh, no, what is it? Yeah. Work like, work like it all depends on you. Pray like it all depends on God. So mm-hmm. it's like, I, it's, it's, I like that saying because it's kind of like, you know, you, you put in the work, you do everything you possibly can. And then there's going to be a moment where you just have to let go and surrender and whatever happens happens and it's out of your control. It's out of your hands. And, and it's, um, <clears throat> there's only so much that I can control. You know, there's only so much that I can, um, I, there's only so much I can do, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I am, I've watched, um, my career from this like outside perspective where I will see myself struggle. I will see, you know, like even starting out and, um, and in the middle and even now, I mean, it's like all this kind of stuff, but it's like, I, I remember those moments of, okay, I've done X amount of jobs. All right. I've been able to pay my rent. I've been able to pay my bills. Now I am back to zero. Now I'm waiting for that other job to come in. Is that other job going to come in? I don't know. I don't know. And it's like sitting within that commitment um, of just, are you going to stay here? Are you going to cave? Are you going to leave? Are you going to give up? What are you going to do? Um, and I've been at the brink so many times of, of wanting to walk away and going, this is too hard even though I've had this kind of undeniable purpose within me saying, stick with it, stick with it. This is something that you really need to do. You're not going to be able to live with yourself if you don't do this. Um, and having to kind of recommit to that each time. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's been, you know, it, it doesn't get any easier. I thought it would, um, the more proof that I had or the bigger projects I got or the more money I made, or, you know, I thought that that would just, that would just at some point stop. Um, then it gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. Stakes get higher. You know what I mean? It's almost like, whew, whew, we pulled that one off. Where's <laughs> the next one? Is it going to happen again? I don't know. I yeah. mean, it's, there's definitely that whole process with it, but I, I don't know. For me, I have faith and I surrender when I get scared and I have to just throw my arms up when I can't control it anymore and go, I have to tell myself, all right, you know what? I've done everything I can possibly do up until this point. It is your job to use your past experiences as your facts. We've been here before. We know something will come up at some point to keep us on this path. If it doesn't, then we'll deal with that when it comes. And that's really all you can do. I think that's uh, an incredibly relatable mantra because like I sort of feel that way right now like I'm going through that you know it's the beginning of the year jobs are sparse like you get that like oh boy here we go yeah. again I, and I I'm like in that right now and I get it but I do also feel that supreme confidence in myself that it's going to work out and figure itself out um I wonder if that's just like a thing that we you know I, I often say I've got irrational confidence in my in myself and I don't know why like if I could bottle it and sell it I'd be a billionaire and it would just be the greatest thing ever but that's not how it works unfortunately um but yeah it's super relatable and we're in a field that's incredibly competitive and you never know if the next job is going to be your last job or if you do a good job or a bad job and how that's going to impact the work that you're going to do again in the future and yeah i think that's just like incredibly normal and and something that everyone feels yeah I think, yeah, everybody goes through that. And I think no matter what your field is, whether you're in a creative field or not, I think there's a part of that, you know, it's like there is no such thing as job security. We've all learned that in COVID. <laughs> like there is no such thing as anything is secure. I mean, it's, you know, if you have your loved ones and your health, you're, you are a fucking millionaire. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the reality of the situation. And I think we've all been slapped in the face with, you know, 
reprioritizing what matters and what's important and um, having respect for other people and thinking of others other than just yourself and, you know, getting some quiet time and some ability to look inward and figure out where you really want to be and, and what's important, you know? I mean, I think this these last couple of years, it's all been forced upon us to do that in one way or another. Some people maybe have taken that opportunity to do that or not. I don't know. But um, everyone I seem to talk to, it seems to be a common theme. Um, and so, yeah. you know, I, I think that's that's kind of the climate that we're in. Um, I think you also, so, you know, I'm 36. I think you also reach an age in life where the important things in your life become incredibly clear, right? It's not like to what you said, like millions oh, yeah. of dollars in the bank. It's like the health of the people and the loved ones that you have around you. And, you know, I'm sure it, it took this pandemic for a lot of people to get a better, clearer picture of that. But it is the most undeniable fact that... I mean, yeah. that's... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just saying, it's like the most undeniable fact that the only thing that really is important in life is like, can you buy food? Are your, your family and friends healthy? Like, are the people around you happy? Like, I've eschewed, you know, six figure plus career in, you know, uh, corporate America because I just didn't fucking love it anymore. I hated myself. I hated going yeah. to work every day. Yeah. And when you start going through what the world has gone through the last two years, it reprioritizes the things that are important for sure. Yeah, it's, and I, and I know that feeling and I've, I've, I've had, you know, um, corporate America experience as well. Um, you know, and all, all kinds of jobs and all, types of scenarios and, um, you know, trying to find any way to make it relatable to creative at some, somehow. Um, and I've been lucky to find a way to do that, but I have had a lot of unique experiences in between to kind of get a taste of all that is out there. Um, and like you, I'm like, okay, I, I'm choosing to commit to myself. I'm choosing to, you know, I'm choosing this job for mm -hmm. myself because this is what makes me the most happy. And I think that's, you know, when it came time for me to kind of make that decision of going, all right, if directing is something I want to do, oh, well, let's get going because yeah. there's no time to waste yeah. here. Um, you know, and it's scary in your mid thirties to kind of pick up and sort of change the entire trajectory of your career. And, you know, having over a decade of people looking at me one way and going, this is what she does. This is what she does. We know what she does. Mm -hmm. And now just kind of switching it up and changing it all together and going, no, 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 this is what I do now. Can you, can, does that translate? Can we do <laughs> that? I don't know. You know, and some people are like, yeah, that makes total sense. And some people are like, huh? Yeah. You know, it's, and, and I think that's kind of the, there's a lot of beauty in that too, because I think those that, you know, aren't getting it or it's not clicking for them or they're not on board. Great. Get out of the way, make the room so that I can, you know, <laughs> make room for the people that do see it and do get it so I can keep going. I think it's, um, I think you it's, know what I mean? it's funny because <laughs> I think it was roughly around this time last year where we spoke for the first time and you were going back and forth about moving to Nashville and then like was it last yeah. year? It feels like it could have been five years ago. I'm not really sure. Um, but it's like just amazing to kind of see how like things grow and mature for you that you're like literally on the cusp of this like monumental career achievement. Um, I'm sort of curious how, you know, obviously you've got to get through the next week or two and then however long in post-production mm -hmm. it'll be you know, weeks, months, whatever it might be. Um, I'm super curious if you've given any thought to what this means for the next chapter of your career beyond you know, the next couple of months. Yeah, I have given it a lot of thought. I think I'm really hoping that this, um, you know, as creatives, we need proof, right? We need proof that we've done something to show that we do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be really frustrating at times because for me, I've always felt like a director in all areas of my career. That is all I do all day long. I know it's a skill that I have and I know it's something that I've done immensely tenfold over and over and over and over again. But there are certain pieces that you need for your book or your reel or whatever to physically show someone, hey, I can direct a feature. Hey, I can direct a commercial. Hey, I can do a music video and they need to just physically see it. So for me, I'm grateful that I'm and, and I think also too, when I made this decision to choose directing and, and let that be the path, I was like, 
oh, <laughs> there are certain things that I'm going to need to show that I can do this. And, you know, even though I had those things, there are specific pieces that, you know, you, you need. So the fact that this opportunity presented itself when it did, again, was one of those moments of, you know, kind of, you know, all hope lost. And then this thing came in and I'm like, OK, it's mm -hmm. choosing me back. So I'm going to continue to choose it. So, um, yeah, I, I think what I hope that this does going forward for future is, you know, this will, you know, show people that I can work on this level and this scale. Um, and hopefully more projects like this will come in. Um, long form narrative will continue, whatever that looks like, whether it's in music videos, concert films, whether it's in a short doc or, you know, a, a short or a, a feature that's all, you know, all totally fiction. I mean, who knows? That's the direction. That's the hope. So I'm just trying to, you know, collect my my little eggs in my little basket <laughs> and, you know, proof that I've been on the hunt and hopefully uh <laughs> Okay, you see that? Yeah, I saw it. They can't see that because they're only going to hear it, but that's kind of funny. Um, so <laughs> you should do video. Look at your beautiful face. You oh, should. Thank you. You should, you should record this. Yeah. Um, maybe next time. I, yeah. Maybe, <laughs> Although I, really, you know, we, time. we were talking over this weekend when we uh, locked this in, and I was like, "Yeah, no, we. I don't record video because you know I don't want to put that out on the internet." And then I'm, it's funny enough, I'm actually modeling for the first time next week. And it's like, oh my gosh! Yeah, you said you were gonna model. Okay, explain this. Explain so, this. So I think it goes back to the serendipitous nature of life, right? Like we're having this conversation because a girl I met through a girl I used to work with was best friends, right? Caitlin Brooks, who I love to death. Like we, like this is why we're friends, right? Yeah. Because of like some random person of a friend yeah. of a friend, right? That's how it works. So I was yeah. shooting a bunch of concert photography last year um, for the Wellmont Theater, which is right next to my apartment where I live. And I got some random bands who started following me on Instagram. And this one girl who's in a band was like, hey, like we're playing at Rockwood Music Hall. Can you shoot the show? And I was like, oh, I can't. I'm working a different event that night. But we became Instagram friends. And she's got a clothing line that she's dropping. And she was like on Instagram saying, hey, I need a big burly fucking overweight <laughs> male model to come <laughs> help out with a shoot. And... Uh, <laughs> are you interested and i was like i mean That's amazing. i was like no not really um but yeah so funny enough next week we're gonna be in a yes. studio and I'm, i mean i'm gonna be shooting content for them as well but like also there's this like <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face and not laugh this hysterically, is, but it's like, that's like, that's life. This right? is yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah. This is incredible. I was like, I'm big and tall is going to be knocking on the door you. and like, you know, fucking men's warehouse. Big and tall ain't got nothing on you. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But this I think is next level. It goes this is next level. It goes back to like how I view life, right? It is about the connections that you make with people and how, for yeah. me, it's like I want to see everyone in my sphere be successful and be happy, right? And like when you put that sort of yeah. uh, mantra out into the world, like opportunities arise, like me being the next, you know, Zoolander. So, like, that's, I think, you know, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> if you say it, it happens. Yeah, right. Um, manifest. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I love, I'm I'm so sick of that word. <laughs> I'm I'm so sick of I'm so sick of that word. Um, although it's a great word, and I know it's all it's an it's got an important meaning, but I'm sick and tired of that word. Um, it's overused. I I believe in the process oh, of it, and like I awesome. I because I I I think I'm a, a component of it, right? Like to some degree, like the shit that I've been manifesting for the last year and a half is starting to come to fruition now, right? Because I manifested it, but like. I would love to come up with a different word for it. It's, it is overused and oversaturated for sure. But like I, you know, when you talk about the hard work that you put in and like the things that you did and the proof of concept, like I've done plenty of free shoots, I've done plenty of shit for free. And like you do things throughout your time to build your opportunities later on in life. And that's sort of where I feel like I'm at now. Hashtag manifesting, yeah. hashtag wrong advice podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Where preparation meets opportunity. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, fair enough. It's, it's true. It's true. Yeah, it is. It's just an oversaturated word. I also feel like it has a certain connotation at some point where it's like there is it's like this. I create I, 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 I like it's all like self-based. Self yeah. 
And, and not so, I mean, maybe selfish isn't the right word, but it's like, I, I think there, yes, there is a level there to me. It has two. it's like, it's missing a step. It's mm-hmm. like, it's, it's the conversation we had. It's like, yes, you have to, you have to work and prep and prepare and create that vision in order to manifest that thing, to make the room for it. Yes. But then there is that secondary piece that nobody really talks about enough in my opinion. And it's so heavily weighted in my experience throughout my entire time as a creative and all the sacrifices that I made, which is surrender. And when you do absolutely everything to repair and sometimes prepare and sometimes nothing works, then what do you do? Where does that faith come in for you? Where does that trust come in for you? And where to right? Like literally though, I mean, and that's to me, I think it's, it's, I wish that conversation was had a little bit more because I think as as people enter into this world of creative or continue down their path, it is so important to understand that extra piece that it takes in order to be successful and advance within your own success in your journey in that regard. Because it's not, you know, work hard and it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, you know, totally. I, you know, put a thousand... Put a, put a thousand things in your mind and going, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. There is so much more involved to create that. And there's also a lot that has to come to you. And, you know, it, it's, it's, anyway, that's my, I'm, that's I'm my opinion with you. of it. I'm, 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 I'm big time with you. And I'm glad you said that because I feel like I'm in that right now where I'm struggling to, so it's like I keep getting the things that I want, right? I'm booking this gig. I'm getting this opportunity. I'm putting yep. this thing. But it's like too few and far between, right? Like I want to be doing so much more and so much higher frequency. And I want to be working seven days a yeah. week instead of three days a week or, you know, 10 times a month instead of whatever, yeah. right? And I feel like you're, I'm in right. this very odd in-between land where, you know, mm-hmm. almost like the master of none, right? Like I've got this podcast, it's doing great. Yeah. It's amazing. But like, you know, I don't have as many paid photo shoots this month, but I'm doing a vid- music video, but I'm getting published right. in this thing. So it's like, it's all right. very chaotic. And it's like, like you said, it's like to some degree, I've got to just like let it come to me and me be accepting of the opportunities and the people and the places and the things that happen. And And to me, Hard work is great and like there's no substitute for hard work, but a lot of what I think is important in terms of building a career for yourself and building a life for yourself is the relationships that you have with people and those relationships Mm -hmm. are what foster the opportunities for you to do things in life, right? Like I think that to me, it's just how life is. I'm I'm a hundred percent on board with that and I, yes, very much so and I think it's, it's actually... It's one of the most important things too, right? It's like um, cultivating that relationship with yourself and with others and having that trust and that faith and that loyalty within one another to help and create that next thing is very, very important. And I think also too, it's like my personal experience, um, I feel like I've had to learn a lot of hard lessons with people when it comes to pushing myself in this direction with my career and what I've always wanted, right? Like there's a lot of people that will, um, there's a lot of people that will come in to create a block or, Mm. you know, be, be the teacher that is more of the challenger. Right. Mm. Um, and it's learning how to learn from those people, um, without com- totally and completely losing yourself and getting too far off track, right? And learning those lessons and learn how to create the room and learn how to um, read people and have stronger instinct um, and influence over who you allow into your world and becoming more selective that way. Mm-hmm. And really thinking about the people that are actually helping you <laughs> and are you helping them? Is are you Is there is is there a fulfillment that's happening or is it just a takeaway like Mm -hmm. it's you know and i think learning how to do that on a personal level is always directly related to how everything else is going um business wise and in creative you know it's like i learned that lesson for business and personal are not separate um (laughs) because everything i do in my personal life affects what what happens in my in my creative life and mainly because 
it's, it's, it's all the same energy that's getting put in. It's all coming from me. So if I'm in a bad spot or I've got, you know, I'm surrounded by, you know, the wrong people or doing the wrong thing, it's, it's gonna, you'll see it, you know, I mean, it's, and I, and I had to learn that lesson. I feel like really early on. Um, and it was kind of scary, you know, because it was like, well, wait a minute. You know, it's like, I had to almost get out of this mindset of like, am I being punished? You know, like, because I'm trying to learn and explore and expand, am I being punished? You know? And it's like, no, it's not a punishment. They're all graces and gifts and opportunities to push forward. So Mm. it's just, and you learn, you learn a lot and you gain a lot of information. Um, and I feel like now all the people that I'm surrounded by, um, are such incredible people and so positive and so loving. And I feel proud because I feel like I did a lot of work on myself to allow for those people to be there. So it's, yeah. I mean, and that, and that is a hundred percent reflected in, you know, what's been happening with, with my career and, or at least whatever the hell I'm trying to do. We'll <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, I love that. I think it's very, it's very easy at times to like have like one part of your life be a negative on another part. Like if like for me, I'm single as fuck. So like I could look at that as being like this negative aspect <laughs> of my, my single as fuck. you know what I'm saying? Like I could, I could look at that as like a negative aspect of my life and I could let that bleed into other things. Right. But I've got all this other amazing shit going on in other portions of my life. So I allow it to sort of just like envelop itself in its own place. And I, I think it's a lot easier said than done, right? Yeah. You, you you have only so much energy it that is. you can put out on a daily basis. And, you know, we all have good days and bad days for sure. Um, I just think that the, the lessons that I've learned yeah. over the last two years are serving me tremendously in a million different ways that I can have ever realized. I think it's also timing too, right? Like it's really leaning in and accepting timing. And I think, you know, it's like when I've been single in long-term relationships in and out, it's always been, it's always about timing, you Mm -hmm. know, it's, it's, it's always a timing thing. And I think it's, um, it can be really tough in my, for me, it was really tough to kind of understand the pacing of why certain people come in and then when, and then they go away and what, you know, it's like that, that timing and that pacing can be really, really, really uncomfortable. Mm. Um, I, but I, has also like been really, you know, important for me to go, okay, well, you know, if you are alone or single or sitting in this and you're uncomfortable in this, can you like, can you stand yourself? Can you mm-hmm. sit with yourself? Like, Sometimes. can you, <laughs> because how do you expect anybody else to, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Sometimes that's my answer as well. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm awesome. I'm pretty cool. I can't stand myself. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a love hate relationship. Know, I think that's also, <laughs> Oh, absolutely. But I also think that's like a very, that is kind of what I've learned within timing and pacing of having, you know, people come in and out. And I think that's, um, you know, it's in those moments of being able to sit with you and that can be really tough, but you have all these other amazing things that are happening that are feeding you and that's creating, Yeah, I think that the, space is getting filled in other ways too. Totally. You know? I think the best lesson that I've learned over the last couple, well, one of the great lessons that I've learned over the last couple of years is to be um, extremely protective of my time, right? Like if I'm going to yeah, oh go yeah. spend oh yeah. an hour, two hours oh, oh yeah. to dinner with someone, or if I'm going to go on a three or four hour shoot, like I'm going to be protective of my time, right? You only get one life to live. You only have, you know, so many days on this earth. I don't want to have regrets in terms of how I allocated the only resource that really matters. Right. Yeah. That, that was been a very, very Dude, valuable lesson. I've, yeah, I think I, I think I just learned that lesson this year, actually in the last seven or eight months since we talked last, I just figured that one out. Um, because my, my manager, like we were, when, especially when we were restructuring business, she was like, she was just looking at all of these areas of my business and these pockets that were kind of, um, needing some serious attention. And the biggest thing that came to light was really time and about like the value of my time Mm -hmm. and, you know, like what I would give away or what I would give too much of, or what I needed to pull back on or, 
you know, it was like, we have to restructure this so that your time is valuable and it all is balanced and it makes sense. So, you know, if you're willing to do certain things for certain people at a certain rate, and you decide to do something else for somebody else, how do you make that adjustment, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you're going to work with people and, and negotiate with them based on whatever budget or whatever they can do, and you believe in the project, something you want to do, we can do all of that, but we also have to keep it fair and we have to make it make sense. And so we have to protect your time. We have to make the value your time. Maybe if they don't have you know, as much of this, then they get less of this. Um, whether it's number of images or, you know, how long the video gets to be or how many hours they get you, you know what I mean? It's like, there are always ways to scale your time within that value, not just monetarily. And I think that's, you know, cause there are real projects that will come around and you know that it's worth more than maybe what somebody might be offering. And you're trying to keep your standard at a certain level, but if it's something you really want to do and you know, it's going to advance you or you can use it to help your big picture, that's how you can adjust your, that's how you can justify it, that's you know, like the, with the, the amount of hours somebody gets you or what they get, you know? Isn't that like the catch 22 of like being a creative? Like you work your entire life to get to a certain level and then you like start making sort of uh, exceptions to things because you want to do something else. Like, like, yeah. So like I'm directing a yeah. music video. I think I'm getting paid very fairly for the fact that I've never done it before. I know they're also paying significantly less than if they hired Taylor Ballantyne, right? You know what I mean? So like that to me is like where you have an opportunity, I, you being me, I have an opportunity to do something for a proof of concept that I can then do again later. Um, I think it is just a very funny sort of, uh, you know, catch 22 of the, of the creative life that I'm, that I'm learning about. <laughs> Oh, it is. It is. It's a, it's a big lesson. And on to, and all, I mean, and it's not, you know, and there's certain pieces of it that really are not um, like I, there are a lot of people that um, there's a, a handful of people that I mentor um, and help their, you know, help, you know, develop their business and um, educate them, trying to pay it forward. Um, Dude, I love that. How are we just hearing I, about this? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do this. Um, I do this for, for, for some people. I also actually recently just started working with uh, summit workshop, which is an incredible, incredible, incredible program. It's been around for quite some time. Um, and it's an amazing photography workshop and they're expanding in all of these incredible ways. And I started doing, uh, in-person workshops with them. And then I also am going to be, uh, doing some online courses. So that's really awesome. I love that. Um, Yeah. I'll, I'll fill you in on all of it. And in fact, you should, um, check it out because I, I taught my first in-person workshop this past August and, uh, in Denver, and it was so unbelievable. It was a lighting workshop, um, that I taught at for about five days. And it, I mean, really intensive program. I actually wish this program existed, (laughs) um, or more things like this existed when I was starting out because I would have, I mean, I would have signed up for this stuff to sharpen on specific things. Um, I mean, this is like, this is like a a trade school on wheels. I mean, it's amazing. And they give you, they set up unbelievable experiences for people that participate. The workshops are incredible. The faculty that participates in the, in the workshops are just extraordinary. And they really, they really create an incredible experience um, for people to learn. And it's, it's, it's amazing. But I learned so much when I did it. So like I, I was teaching at this lighting workshop, but I ended up like, I was like, Oh, yeah, that's how you do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there are so many things that have become instinctually to me. But when you actually have to explain it to someone, you can't. Yeah. It's like you, you Yeah, it's like, have you ever like tried to help a kid out with like their math homework and yeah. it's like fifth grade math homework and you're like, uh, 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 whoa, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know about that. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, and you're like, how do I, you like secretly are like, how did I not know what the fuck two plus two was? Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's like, you can't, it's, it's kind of hard. Anyhow, I, that's something that I've noticed, um, for me is, uh, that was, there was so much once I had to explain it to somebody and break it down in simple terms, it just reaffirmed and re-upped, you know, technical knowledge that I needed. So it was extremely helpful, but I do do this and it is, um, really, really fun. And some of the people that I do mentor 
we get into this conversation a lot, which is, you know, when it comes time to uh, balance and, and advance career and set your rates and your values and, you know, why am I, you know, when do I do that thing for free to create the opportunity to get something in my book to do this without it undervaluing or undercutting everything that I've already done, mm -hmm. right? And it's mm -hmm. like, that is such a conversation that I think we've, you know, and there's two things, not everything is, you know, there are other things that are working against us as creatives that I think are larger issues in the industry. Um, that need to be corrected. And I do believe that a lot of creatives are not, um, they're undervalued. Um, and, and I think as far as rates go, and that's a whole other conversation yeah. for another time, but I believe that there is a lot within this industry that has to be corrected and balanced out um, because creatives really, you know, especially in the camera world, you know, and, and, and starting out, we, we have it tough, man. Um, we have it really tough uh, when it comes to balance and, and properly paying creatives for what they're worth. And um, I think because a lot of that is so accessible and, and there are a lot of young people that don't actually know how to budget and price themselves out appropriately, it's giving people the wrong interpretation of what something actually costs. And yeah. then it's hurting us who have been doing it for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And so part of the reason for me to mentor is to educate and help them understand, listen, here are all, when it comes to pricing a headshot, here are all the things that you need to, here are all the things that you need to think about mm -hmm. because there's a lot that's not being thought about. Um, and when it comes to investing in your equipment, investing in insurance to protect yourself, when it comes to opening up your own business, when it comes to the time that you spend editing and post-production and sending files to people, that is all time and value that needs to be assigned some sort of monetary number. It has to be assigned sure. because it's it's a part of, you know, the process. Every, it's, yeah. it's helping educate people the process of what all goes into this. Um, because I just, you know, I've had this experience too many times in my life where it's like, I, you know, I run around with my head cut off and I do all this work and somehow still can't pay my bills or I got to wait 30 to 90 days for a check to come in. And it, you know, there's, uh, it's things. a whole, it, there's a whole other part of the industry that I think there is a larger conversation that I would like to have at some point about what, you know, what really what there are some big changes that can be made on a you know that that there are just there are a lot of forces that work against us that we have to learn how to adapt to and yeah. um well i think I because think things need to be addressed and called out yeah i think because so like my cheat code is that because i came from like uh you know a practical experience in corporate america and doing sales and like a million other things before getting into the creative career I, I'm, I price myself expensive as fuck because I want to work smarter and not harder. And I think a lot of times people who are in this creative career just want to work a lot and they'll be able to give things away because they just want to get the job and get the money coming in and they don't think about things long term and the practical Correct. aspect of it financially. Um, but I think that's Correct. so fucking cool that you're doing that. You're like this badass mentor, feature director, fucking gangster. <laughs> So Damn. awesome. I, I like the way you make me sound in my head. It doesn't sound like that, but I appreciate that very much. <laughs> That's imposter syndrome. Um, you made me you made me sound great. Yeah, yeah. that is imposter syndrome, boy. Um Taylor that is true. I, that I mean, is a real thing. I, I, I'm just so proud of you. I think you're just such the most wonderful fucking human being that I've had the privilege of, of Dude, having in my so life. Awesome. And Thank I'm you. just a huge fan of yours and I love you a lot and I'm I'm super excited for this incredible opportunity that I know you're going to crush. And, um, as always, the time that you've given me is appreciative and, and wonderful. And I just, I think you're just such a tremendously awesome human being and thanks for coming on again. I love you. Well, I love you too. Thank you so much. You're just incredible and wonderful. And I love, uh, I love, I love your podcast and I love, I love the time that, um, you give to me. It's very, very wonderful. And I'm so excited for you. You're going to crush this 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 music video man Thanks. and hey if you need any if you need a you know if, a mentor if, if you need to work anything out in your head if you need to work anything out in your head shoot me a text i mean i there's a whole bunch of i mean i just did my first one not too long ago so i, I i'm i'm in the boat of first on a lot of this stuff too um 
And it, sometimes it just helps to like talk some things out that start to not make any sense. Well, I, <laughs> I'm absolutely going to take you up on that. And uh, yeah, I love you. Take By care. the way, music, music videos are mini movies. So you're, you know, I'm a feature. You're, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, man. Take care.